In this chapter, I will show you how to optimize cloner instance mode for significantly faster render time. In previous chapter, I explained already difference between cloner and matrix. Also, you know already that render instances produce significantly faster render time than standard instance mode. But what in case that you have to use standard instances and you cannot use render instances instead? As I mentioned already, in this case is a very important optimization. As first step, we have to reduce amount of polygons on all objects, which I would like to use for scattering. You can use polygon reduction tool or remesh tool. Result depends on how close is object to camera. If object is not very close to camera, reduce amount of polygons significantly more. But in case that object is close to camera, reduce amount of polygons just to amount which produce correct result and object is not losing important details. As next step, bake in remesh tool and check out amount of polygons. Lower amount of polygons produce faster result. As next step, use cloner. Use object mode and assign surface object. In this scene, it's plain. In transform section, use rotate parameter for correct object direction. As next step, set up cloner options exactly as you need. But for this example, we will use standard instance mode. As next step, choose Clones Distribution Mode. Now you can increase Clones Count. Remember that amount of polygons and Clones Count under Instance Mode are significantly affecting computer performance. Also remember to keep as much as possible all clones in area which is visible in camera. Because under Standard Instance Mode, are also computing clones which are out of camera view range. As next step use effector. In my case, I'm very often using for scattering random effector. It helps with scale and rotation randomization. And as you can see, it produces more interesting looking result than before. As next step, apply RS material onto the cloner. And as next step, check out the result in Redshift Render View. And because result in 3D viewport is not important anymore, for more efficient workflow, I do not need to see all geometry details, so I will switch display to different mode. It will lighten up 3D viewport and also your hardware will work more efficient. Sometimes when I'm working with a huge amount of clones, I'm completely turning off clones visibility in 3D viewport. Because still I can see entire scene with all clones in the Redshift render view. Now I can increase amount of clones even more. And I can play with seed value to find optimal looking result. Some of these clones are intersecting now, but for this example it's irrelevant, so we do not need to pay attention to it. As next step I can create material variations. So I will use color user data node and round node. As usual, for variation is very useful geometry ID attribute. And as you can see now, ramp node has control over color variations. So as next step, I can try out some gradient presets. Gradient presets are very useful for look depth inspiration. 
or even more control, you can also use color correct null. And as you can see now, I have full control over color variations, so I can create the result exactly as I need. Another important step for better looking scene is lighting. Recently, I created chapters about ACCG and lighting techniques, so check it out. As next step, I can also use Redshift environment. Volumetric atmosphere very well works with clones, integrating scattering, and shows scene depth. Between scattering parameter, brightness of tint color, and light volume contribution is correlation. So as next step, you have to find balance, which will produce better looking result. And as you can see, even we have very simple scene with very basic material, volume contribution helps with more interesting looking result. But main point of this chapter is cloner optimization. So as last step, I have to export cloner into the RS proxy. I would like to export just selected cloner. And I can also name this export exactly as I need. Once it's export done, it will automatically import this RS proxy into the current scene. So as next step, I can disable or even completely delete cloner. It depends on your workflow. In my case, I will save one scene version with cloner before export to have backup if I will need to do some changes. And also I will create new scene version where will be RS proxy only. Because scatter objects inside RS proxy produce significantly faster render time than scatter objects under cloner with standard instance mode. If I will need to do some material changes, later I can activate scene material which will override RS proxy material. Now is scene completely optimized and ready for render. As in the previous chapter, also for this render test, I am using automatic sampling and GI with brute force. So all render tests are consistent with the same settings, include ACCG color management. If I will render it out, as you can see, this render took less than two minutes, which is significantly faster than in previous chapter. So now you get an idea why is RS proxy so useful for scattering. Also, how important is scene and geometry optimization. In the next chapter, I will show you scatter techniques, which will help you better understand how to scatter multiple objects over terrain.